Yep, and it, you know, it sounds like a broken record. Everyone seems to say this, but planting date. We really are seeing the last two years now, we've got a pretty great study out. Earlier planted soybeans have a higher yield potential. And that's been something of true value. You can get the planter out. You know, soybeans tolerate those cooler, not, not as ideal conditions in the soil. You know, that corn you think, you want that nice uniform emergence. Soybean can tolerate that a little better and come out on top with some pretty good yields. And so that early planting date, we're seeing an advantage there. But then the questions that we're seeing beyond that, now that the beans are in the ground, do you have to change your management strategy based on the date that they were planted? And that's the key to maximizing the full success. And what changes do you have to make? Let's say, let's start with, with temperature and, and moisture. Yep, so from temperature and moisture, keep an eye on that emergence. How uniform does that stand come up? And then do those early season stand counts. You know, one of the things about early May or late April beans on the early end, um, they can tolerate those low stands. You know, if you're coming up at 80 to 100,000, they'll probably be okay. Uh, if we're on the second half of May or into June and you're at those stands, right, we might be behind. So understanding, you know, those decisions there, how to manage, do we replant if the stand gets too low? But I'm not afraid of low stands if we're early planted because they have the season to make up for it. That's a key thing. Um, one of the things, and this is a good news to the growers, maybe not so much to retailers, we find that early planted soybean are less responsive to fertilizer. But when you think about it, when they early planted, they grow slow. And that's one of the key points, is a slow growing soybean plant, the soil supply keeps up with the demand. If you plant beans in April and uh, June, oh man, they're out of the ground in less than a week, they're off to the races. They are growing so fast the soil supply probably can't keep up with the daily demand. And then we're seeing better responses to fertilizer on our later planted soybean. So it's kind of counterintuitive. Something cold soils, you need the nutrition because it's not being released in the soil, but it's all about rate of growth. And what sort of application would you suggest for those uh, later planted beans that are growing rapid? Yep, so one of the things we see, you know, soybean yield is either number of seeds per area or the weight of the seed. And we think oftentimes potassium for soybean because they need a lot of potassium. But that's all in the vegetative biomass. In the grain is phosphorus, sulfur, and nitrogen. So we've been looking at some broadcast phosphorus sulfur sources to make sure that we have the nutrients needed to fill the seed. Uh, and that's what we're looking at is some pre-plant broadcast phosphorus applications ahead of those soybeans, but getting the better responses on the later planted soybeans uh, as opposed to the earliest planted. One of the speakers here indicated that he's constantly putting fungicides on beans. What's, uh, what are your thoughts on that? Yes, so we see routinely good, consistent results to foliar protection. You know, I mentioned earlier, fertility tends to maybe have a better response based on when the beans went in the ground. Our foliar protection response the last two years has been consistent across planting dates. Whether you're early or late, the response to foliar protection in the last two years for us was about four bushels per acre. Now that doesn't seem like a lot, but we've had two drought years, and that means no disease pressure. So even in the absence of disease, we're seeing that plant health effect that many of these fungicides come with, uh, giving us a yield advantage at the end. The whole key is keeping the plant healthy and constantly healthy, uh, uh, making it sure that it's, it's getting everything it wants. Completely. You know, we always think of the early season responses, right? When you're going out there and you can see things quick, it's a long season, Stu. And when we get to the end of the season, we don't want to give up. You know, you can set a strong start. You can sprint the first mile of the three-mile race. And then if you forget to maintain yourself or resupply for miles two and three, you're not going to make it to the finish line. So soybean management is a season-long game, right? You get the crop off to the right start, the right planting date, the right fertility. You set the yield potential but now you have to have the back-end management to fill that yield, that, that order you've made. That's where things like foliar protection come in, giving that stay green effect, um, then ensuring that the fertility is available all season long, right? If it's available the first half of the season, that's seed number, but you need nutrition in the second half of the season for seed weight. What are the lar what's the later season fertility that you need to recommend? So we're looking at different sources. Right, slow release sources, sources that might trickle that nutrition out throughout the season rather than something that's all available right up front. Uh, on the phosphorus market, there's different plays with this coming out, new types of granules, different formulations, different sources of phosphorus. And then there is the foliar play. You know, can we do some in-season foliar applications, largely on the micronutrient side? Uh, there's a lot of interest in boron to help with flowering and pod set. Um, some molybdenum and other micronutrients. And it's just ensuring that that soybean always has what it needs 
um, as it goes. Sounds expensive. It can be expensive, and that's the battle, right? We want to make sure that the inputs we're purchasing have value, and that's where the interesting, the early planning date. Put the beans in the ground. Maybe you don't need the fertilizer because the beans are going to do what they can with soil supply, but then the ROI, we tend to see the later planted beans, you get better ROI on the investment because you're helping manage those beans even further. So from an ROI perspective, it does all interact, and every pass across the field does come with a dollar amount. That's one thing very important to remember. Systems we've, we're talking about, these are more the conventional systems, right, in, in central Illinois we're commonly seeing. Um, we haven't taken this into no-till specifically in our research, um, but we are starting to, and we're starting to look at cover crop, right? That might also change the influence of fertility and nutrient cycling and how a crop uses it, you know? The cover crop is a great tool for soil management, but sometimes we get the yield penalty because of all that biomass. What if we can use that biomass as a nutrient source as it releases, and the key was just making sure it releases fast enough for that soybean to take advantage of. That's some of the research we have coming down the road that we're really excited to talk more about as we get more confident with what we're finding. Um, what we are finding is you might be able to add one or two things to that termination pass and get an advantage if you just go beyond straight herbicide to kill that cover crop off.